All right, I'm going to say it. This is essentially AGI. Well, Benjamin de Kraker, you can say that as much as you want, but this doesn't make your statement any more true. This is not AGI. Why? We'll look at that later. Still, what OpenAI did here with GPT 4.0 is amazing. So let's have a look at the presentation and let's see what they have for us. And by the way, if you have heard about the buzz about the ChatGPT2 chatbot in the last few weeks, this was basically GPT 4.0. So there you already could use and test it before it was out. But it also tells us what the capabilities of ChatGPT 4.0 are. And well, they're marginally better than ChatGPT 4. It's still freaking amazing what they have done with this. And we'll start with the best thing about ChatGPT 4.0 first. Because we want to be able to bring this experience to as many people out there as possible. So we're very, very excited to bring GPT 4.0 to all of our free users out there. And to all of the free users. And this is amazing. And not just GPT 4.0, everybody will get free access to the GPT store, the vision feature, the browse feature, so searching in the web, the new memory feature, so teaching um, ChatGPT something that it then ingrains in its long-term memory, and the advanced data analysis, so uploading PDFs and graphs and things like that. All of that will be available for free in the next weeks, which is huge. This is freaking amazing. Now, the paid users will still have a higher capacity limit. I think she said five times or something like that. But all of that for free is absolutely huge. And not just that for free, but also ChatGPT is now available for everybody to use just like that. You don't even need an account. And you can just go to the website and you can use all of that for free without an account. This is freaking amazing and I love it. Now they show off a few of GPT 4.0's new features. So let's have a look at that. Just take a deep breath and remember, you're the expert. I like that suggestion. Let me try a couple deep breaths. Can you give me feedback on my breaths? Okay, here I go. <laughs> Whoa, slow. A little bit there. Mark, you need a vacuum cleaner. Breathe in. For a count of four. Let me try again. Breathe in deeply. And then four, and then X. All right. So first of all, you see, you hear the breaking up of ChatGPT. I think this is probably because of the internet there, and a lot of people are trying to use the internet, so that's why it's breaking up. Uh, but you can see ChatGPT in real time answers. So there's absolutely or very very little latency between him asking a question and then ChatGPT answering, which is great. And also, it is able to in real time estimate what is going on, right? His his breathing. ChatGPT can immediately react to that and tell him, hey, no, this is not how, how deep breathing goes. Breathe a little bit slower and deeper. So this is pretty, pretty cool. And moving on with these voice capabilities. Byte. Byte was a curious robot. I always explored the story, but I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Got it. Let's add some drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named No, Bite. no, no, ChatGPT. I really want maximal emotion, like maximal expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. Bite Actually, can was... Can you do this in a robotic voice now? Initiating dramatic robotic voice. Once upon a time in a world not too different from ours. There so this is freaking amazing. The voice expressiveness of GPT 4.0 is really, really good. And you can give it real time instructions of how you want the voice to be, which is great. Also, another thing you notice here is that you just can talk over GPT 4.0. So you don't need to wait, wait for it to finish. You can just interrupt it and talk over it uh, if it's too slow for you or if your question is answered and you want to talk about something else, which is also a very, very cool new feature. 
The next thing they show off is GPT-40 as a real-time translator, which is also very impressive and a very great use okay, case. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian, and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci, come risolviamo le equazioni lineari? <laughs> Sicuramente, sì. Mm -hmm. Certainly, yes. Great, it looks like it works. <laughs> All right, well, pretty good demonstration. And using ChatGPT as a real time translator is a very, very amazing use case. Like something like this, I've used ChatGPT before for that, but also with the new voice output, that's pretty amazing. And I'll definitely use it a lot while traveling. And now the last thing I want to show you here is how ChatGPT interacts with video or how it sees emotions, which is also great. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to show you um, a selfie of what I look like, and then I'd like you to try to see what emotions I'm feeling based on how I'm looking. Sounds like a fun challenge. Go ahead and... All right. Uh, I didn't quite capture it here. Let me see if I can get that because this is actually um, interesting to note here. Go ahead and show... Yeah. Um, I didn't capture it, but as you saw up here, you saw that he first showed the table. Go ahead. There, there you see it. He first had the camera on the table and then he turned the camera around. Uh, and uh, this is important because uh, you'll see in just a second. And show me that selfie and I'll put my emotional detective hat on. Okay, so here's me. So what kind of emotions do you think I'm feeling? Hmm, it seems like I'm looking at a picture of a wooden surface. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you see, this tells me that ChatGPT is probably not watching the video. You probably don't show ChatGPT a video, but probably ChatGPT is taking screenshots or just looking at single pictures. Uh, and then if you tell ChatGPT to look at another uh, situation, it will take another screenshot basically, but not actually looking at a video. You know what, that was the thing I sent you before. Don't worry, I'm not actually a table. Um, okay, so, so take, a, take another look. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, as you see here, he says, take another look. So now ChatGPT is probably taking another screenshot and looking at the picture again. So it's not actually interacting with video. Ah, uh, there we go. It looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful with a big smile and maybe even... But yeah, it can definitely um, see emotions. Obviously, that's a very obvious emotion, but still a pretty, pretty cool feature. And GPT-40 also comes with a desktop app. So you basically can have ChatGPT on your desktop and then you just mark something and send it over to ChatGPT and then it tells you what to do or helps you with it, which could be particularly helpful for coding, which is also what they show off here. But another interesting thing to notice, let's read through the article here real quick. In its blog post, OpenAI stated that the new ChatGPT desktop app would be a staggered release for Mac OS first and Windows at some undetermined point before the end of the year. We are rolling out the Mac OS app to Plus users starting today, and we will make it more broadly available in the coming weeks. We also plan to launch a Windows version later this year. One interesting note about the desktop app, it will allow ChatGPT to see a live video screen capture of your screen if you choose so, and analyze your workflow. Now, this is what I just said, but this is very, very interesting because as we all know, OpenAI is partnered with Windows, but now it's bringing up the Mac OS app first. So just as an interesting side note here. But now let's go back to you, Benjamin de Kraker, and I see that you are an AI developer, so you probably know more about that than me, but apparently you are not fully understanding what AGI means, or maybe you're using a different definition. But yeah, all right, I'm gonna say it. This is essentially AGI. This will be seen as magic to masses. Well, yeah, probably. What else do you call it when a virtual person can listen, talk, see, and reason almost indistinguishably from an average human? Isn't that AGI? Well, no, it is not.
What else I would call that? I would call that an advanced LLM system that is incrementally better than the version before, GPT-4, but now also has interoperability with text and voice. This, this is what I would call it. And as you can see here, with GPT-4.0, we trained a single new model end-to-end -end across text, vision and audio, meaning that all inputs and outputs are processed by the same neural network. Now, let's take a guess at, at who predicted something like this already. Uh, yeah, I'm just plugging me just a little bit, a little bit here. If I would need to make an educated guess about how GPT-5 will look like, I would guess it will be a incremental improvement, it will be the new best LLM, or just incrementally, and it will have a lot of interoperability. Like we have interoperability with image creation right now, we'll likely also get interoperability with, with speech synthesis, maybe with music creation, and also with video creation with Sora. This would be my uh, educated guess at how GPT-5 will look like. Now, of course, this is not GPT-5 yet, it's GPT-4.0, but we got the interoperability. And maybe GPT-5 will have the rest of the interoperability with Sora that I also just mentioned. But this is basically what I said. It is an incremental improvement over GPT-4. Of course, it's better, but it's not by very much better. So we are really seeing how LMs are plateauing. Yes, it's gotten better, but not by a lot. It's really plateauing, so they are getting into other domains to make it yeah, more, uh, more capable in other things. So now you have the speech and vision interoperability. So basically it's still at the same level of an LLM, but now you have interoperability with speech and vision. It's from a reasoning perspective or from a knowledge perspective or from an AGI perspective, not a lot different from GPT-4. It just has more interoperability. It's still based on the same fundamental architecture of predicting the next token that is most likely to come next in a sequence, which, as already Ben Goetzel argued in this paper here, generative AI versus AGI, the cognitive strengths and weaknesses of modern LLMs, will not be a path to AGI. Predicting the most likely token to come next in a sequence is not a valuable path toward AGI. And not just Ben Goetzel says so, even though Ben Goetzel actually coined the term AGI. So we maybe should listen to him when he talks about what is AGI and what isn't. But yeah, not just Ben Goethe says so, but also Jan LeCun, the chief AI scientist of Meta. He says uh, here, Jan LeCun argues that autogressive large language models, LLMs, are not a sufficient path to artificial general intelligence, AGI, because they lack essential capabilities for intelligent beings, such as understanding and reasoning about the physical world. And yes, this is one thing that is lacking. So while ChatGPT may seem as a great conversational partner and seem like it has a lot of knowledge, this is just predicting the most likely token that comes next in a sequence. It doesn't have an actual understanding or a model of how the world actually works. Right? It does not understand how the world works. It just predicts token that come next in a sequence. Also, it doesn't have a sophisticated theory of mind. It also doesn't have any intrinsic goals arising. These are all things that OpenCock Hyperon, the AGI approach of the ASI Alliance, starts to tackle. If we, for example, here look at the alpha release of OpenCock Hyperon, where we can play around with the programming language Meta, Meta allows for self-modification. So programs are fully self-reflective and we can read and modify the code inside the programs. But this is an amazing and important necessary um, capability for AGI systems. They are self-reflective and can modify and work on themselves. And then also the next cool thing is, it enables a wide range of AI systems to dynamically collaborate. So it makes different AI approaches interoperable. This is what Meta allows OpenCock Hyperon to do. Of course, there are many other things, but this is what we would actually like to see when it comes to an actual AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. Not saying these new features of ChatGPT 4.0 aren't amazing. They are, especially that it's freely available for everybody. But if you want to find out more about how AGI could actually look like and how the OpenCock Hyperon approach goes about things, be sure to check out the video right over here. I see you over there.